I'm Natalie Isaacs. I'm the founder of One Million Women. Welcome to our second uh, session for our Women Power program. It's all about I'm Ready. It's all part of our I'm Ready campaign. And, um, and this is about transforming our homes. And um, I'd like to begin uh, by acknowledging the traditional owners of the Darawal country, that's the land on which I am speaking to you all from uh, this evening. I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past, present and future. And I live in the most beautiful part of the world. I live in the Illawarra. It's this beautiful coastal strip between the Escarpment and the Pacific Ocean. And um, uh, and I recognise and truly appreciate the wisdom of First Nations people and that connection to the land and you know that understanding that the land and the oceans and the waterways are living systems and that we must do everything we can to care and protect and look after our earth um, so welcome everyone again so get yeah, pop your videos on and let's all say hello to each other the other thing tonight is this is a night of discussion. This is to talk about how we get our homes off gas. So if you've got any questions at any time, pop them in the chat. And the beautiful Bree, Wave Bree, um, our head of digital and our head of campaigns, uh, will pick up all the questions from the chat and we will we'll ask our wonderful guest tonight, Nicolette. So um, I'd also like to welcome all our new, the new people. There's a lot of new people on the call uh, tonight that weren't part of the first session. And um, so our Women Power is all about how we transform our homes over this coming year. How do we give ourselves a plan to electrify our lives, to electrify our homes, to get our homes off fossil fuels altogether? It's never underestimate how powerful our homes are. So just to recap, uh, for those of you that weren't on the last session, it was uh, all about uh, energy efficiency. We talked about how we are energy efficient at home because it is actually core to electrification. It's core to getting off gas. It's actually the first step. The more energy efficient we are, the more money we save and the more pollution we prevent from entering the atmosphere. So we talked about measures like insulation and draft proofing and, um, and draft proofing. We spend a lot of time on draft proofing because it's a big piece of this um, and it really helps to reduce the amount of heating and cooling energy, which is typically our greatest energy user. Um, and tonight, it's about gas. So how do we transition our homes away from gas? Gas is a fossil fuel, and it can never, ever be clean. It can never, our houses, if we have gas, can never be zero carbon. Um, even if we do everything else in our homes, if we still have gas, we are still contributing to climate change and we're still relying on fossil fuels. In Australia, about 20% of our total emissions comes from our homes, and that's a massive amount. Um, and just about all of it comes from our cars, our petrol cars, our gas heaters, our gas um, water systems, our gas stoves, and all the fossil fuel plants supplying most of Australia's grid network, um, uh, you know, the electricity. And gas is used by 12.5 million Australians to heat our water, our food and our homes. So it's a big part of um, the landscape. And when we burn or use gas, it produces methane. And methane is a greenhouse gas that's 23 times as potent as carbon dioxide at trapping the heat in the atmosphere. And so what we do over these next few years is really important because, you know, 2030 honestly is the line in the sand where we need to be curbing our um, carbon emissions. And, and although we can't do everything overnight when it comes to transforming our homes, um, and it does cost money, and we do need to have a plan. We need to have a plan for this transition. We need to be able to make the right next big choice when it comes along, you know, those big tip ticket items, our hot water systems, our cooktops, our heating and our cooling. You know, for every gas appliance, there is a more efficient, less expensive, all-electric option. And um, 
Unlike gas, electric homes can be powered by renewable energy, including the solar on our rooftops. And I think an all electric home um, is more efficient and will deliver cheaper energy bills, which is what we need right now. And our partners beyond zero emissions um, have found that if we have an all electric home that's not relying on gas, it could save up to $4,000 a year in bills. And rewiring Australia have actually put that at $5,000 a year. And so either way, it's a massive amount. I just want to show you just a screenshot that we took from the Rewiring Australia website, um, which just shows you that comparison. Mm. Unless you can't, oh, oops. So one thing I did want to say is that the team and I this week have really been talking a lot about the relationship that we have had with energy and how that has actually shifted over the years. You know, years ago, it really was this one way relationship. Here in Australia, we had about 30 coal fired power stations and um, that generated electricity for the whole country. And that got distributed through the grid to power our homes. And, 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 and we didn't really think much about it. It was, um, we were passive receivers of energy. We, you know, didn't think there was another way really. And, um, you know, you turn on the lights and it, I know you don't turn on the lights and it just powers up a coal fired power station, but, but you just, it was just this one way relationship. But today that picture is just so different. We are now millions of generation points. Um, every home that has rooftop solar is a generation point. We have become active players in this energy story. We are influencing the grid. We are the solar power stations across the country. Um, and wow, I just wanted to mention that because that is incredibly powerful. And we as our households are an and, and us as individuals and, and the choices we make are really shifting the energy story. And big infrastructure such as offshore wind and big batteries and pumped hydro, you know, they can all be hampered with delays. And that really makes consumers and our households and the choices we make even more vital today. Our homes can be such a big piece of that story. And I have this beautiful vision of twinkling lights across the country um, um, that our households are the beacons of hope and light and optimism. And um, I just wanted, yeah, to share that with you. And I know that we can't do everything at once, but let's not wait till things break. Most of the time, you won't know that your hot water system is about to break. Um, it could be more than 10 years old. And I know when something breaks and it's immediate and you have to make those decisions, you usually just go with what you just had. And we have to change that. We have to make the right next big choice. So um, I will leave it there because I wanted to now introduce our incredible guest speaker tonight. And um, Nicolette Bully is just such an old friend. You know, she is a long-term friend of One Million Women. And um, Nick was there advising me before I started, before I launched One Million Women. So she goes right back to really helping to shape that narrative before we before we launched. Um, and Nick, and I'm just going to read a little bit from her bio. She's an expert advisor with the Smart Energy Council and works with others on electrification. Electrification of everything, which is with renewables and other smart energy systems. Nick is a passionate advocate for rolling out affordable, renewable and reliable energy systems, including EVs, to everyone in her electorate and, of course, across Australia. Um, so that's homeowners, renters, businesses, community service organizations and industry. And, um, and I think I also just want to say that Nick stood as a community independent in 2022 in the federal election, and she was endorsed by the Voices of Bradford, and she received 46% of the vote after preferences. And so, um, you know, we hope to see you back, Nick. 
And thank you so much for giving us your time tonight and sharing your wisdom with us all about how we electrify our lives, how we can get our homes off gas. So I'm going to hand it over to you. And everybody put your questions in the chat and we'll get to those um, once Nick's given us about 10 minutes or so of just an overview of gas in our homes. All right. Hey, thank you, Nat. And um, hello, everybody. Uh, fantastic to be part of such a vibrant community of people who see the benefit of being in action in every single way to be part of a really very important and frankly really worthwhile transition and what we do in our homes the decisions we make in there at times can feel a little bit dull and boring but actually it's really really cool as Nat said already so much of what we do we get to save money make our homes more comfortable and also healthier whilst helping improve um, and hopefully navigate towards a safer climate there it really is very little downside in it. And with more and more programs from the government to help us with some of the upfront costs and some of the big stuff, um, it's becoming easier. I'm zooming into you from Durramurrugal country. It's um, the upper north shore of Sydney. And yes, I'm inside an electric vehicle while I have some girlfriends um, uh, ordering dinner for me over, over here. So please <laughs> excuse me. I hope it doesn't get too dark. Um, um, I wanted to say that when I started out um, in the 90s looking at household energy efficiency in New South Wales, it, I really was looking for something to hang all of this and make sense on it too. And as Nat said, you can't do it all at once. So you need to have a plan. You need what what's going to get me there, a big leap first, something I can do that might be easy or something that is cheaper, something that's impactful. It depends completely on where you're up to and what you've got. And what you're working with do you own your home are you renting your home are you in an apartment are you a renter in an apartment are you a landlord of an apartment do you live in a motor home do you, there are certain you know, which climate so so many different variables that are going to impact what you choose to do when um but when i started out there was this thing in waste uh, yeah some of it they'd add an extra r but reduce reuse recycle and i think nowadays it's reduce reuse repurpose or is that a, I don't know and recycle so the one that I kind of made up is for the energy sector is save switch and sequester so I'm just going to say like last week I heard or last session Nat and everybody went through the saving how do you reduce energy in the home and saving energy in the home um as already been said is a, just a really sensible thing that you can get on doing right now it also helps reduce emissions from from gas. Let me think about that for a second. If I'm cooking with a cook a gas cooktop and I'm using a lid on my saucepan, my water and my produce in there is going to cook quicker. And I, you know, get that water to boil before the spaghetti goes in. You're reducing gas by being efficient with some of those features. Um, and similarly, I don't know if anybody wants to put their hand up who really likes to have warm hands with warm water at winter time so you turn on the winter you turn on that hot tap probably 40 50 liters of water comes out before you start to get some element of tepid water that is heating water up when using gas right up the pipe do you really need it and if you do i know this sounds really silly but it works in my family even though i've got teenage adults now is giving them a thermos of hot water and I leave the thermos with plug by the sink in the bathroom and they can pour it in there and I only have to heat it up once a day with my solder. It's great. Anyway, but you get the idea. There are ways to save by being smarter with using your appliances. So let's go to switch, which is what today is about. The second bit is we need to get off gas and that's where we told you why. It's a fossil fuel um, and there's some really insipid parts about gas as well in Australia where as domestic consumers of gas, we're paying a lot of money for our gas compared to basically people who are buying our gas as export in other countries. Um, even industry gas prices are tiny compared to what we get charged in the home. And we are in some ways doing the heavy lifting so everybody else gets cheaper gas. Already in Victoria, there's uh, laws where no new um, houses are built, will be built with gas connections 
So what we're seeing is a start of public policy to phase out gas. And as this happens, fewer and fewer households will have gas. And then the per unit fixed cost of all of those of your bill will probably go up. So if you can start to phase out the use of gas, it's a great thing to be ahead of the curve financially as well. So um, getting off gas. Now, we know the main things are cooking, water heating, space heating. Some people have gas on the pool. It's very unlikely. And some people have really fancy ovens or very old ovens and still have gas in those. But pretty, unless you've kind of got the $20,000 plus mark and you're an absolute buzz in the kitchen, gas ovens are, are, are pretty hard to, to come by these days. The other little sneaky places you're going to find gas are things like your barbecue. Now, I'm just going to say this. Um, you probably don't want to get rid of your gas barbecue just yet because if you go to an all-electric home and you don't have all of the infrastructure in terms of batteries just yet, having that sneaky little gas barbie is not a bad backup um, and it's 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 just there. So maybe keep that on for about two or three years. But what we're going to look at now is cooking. Um, again, it depends what your arrangements are. If you're renting, it's really hard. But there's some, and I'll probably just stop to say, being an asthmatic, we now also have um, um, you know, research from the medical profession around um, you know, burning unflued gas in, in homes, which is what you're doing when you've got a gas cooktop, is um, unhealthy and it can be an asthma trigger. Um, so actually there's some extra benefits if that's a problem for you to also get off gas. Now, again, no endorsement for products, but you can whistle off to Ikea and for $99 you can get yourself a portable induction burner or cooktop thing. If you plug it into a standard socket and it's a it works really well, I've got to say. I was a bit surprised. Um, but uh, the microwave's there um, and I'm using that because it's a really efficient way to, um, to cook certain things and to heat up things. But the induction um, cooktop, if you like, and it's just a one burner thing uh, as a plug-in and I put it away when I don't need it, is really it works really well. Um, there are, and ultimately, of course, it's if you're renting, you're not going to have the option to decommission your gas cooktop. That's that's why I'm offering that you could possibly have an induction um, plug-in as well. There are um, induction woks, a little on the expensive side, but once you use one, you will not use anything else. They are so wonderful. Um, space heating. Now, if you have ducted um, heating, which is gas, you'll probably want to check how old it is um, and make a plan for possibly even at uh, about $1,500 putting in uh, zoning. So if you, if you hit the whole house, how can you zone it off? How can you put up some curtains or doors or what have you and only heat the rooms you need? An electric blanket in the bedroom is wonderful. It's like getting into a little spa bath. When you go to bed, do you need to actually heat the room? Turn it on before you go to bed, turn it off when you get in, that, that does just fine. So you're really only going to be heating or cooling the rooms that you need at the time. And you can do that much more efficiently with a reverse cycle air conditioner, which will give you heating and cooling. And you may not actually need to use that large ducted gas heater. It's an option. Again, it depends on your, um, on your climate zone, what is going to make sense financially. Um, in all of this too, you don't want to throw out technology that's been installed as only a few years old. It's got embodied carbon, embodied energy in there. So you want to phase things out as they get older. Um, unless, of course, you're finding it's just unpalatable from a moral perspective that you're burning fossil fuels um, or it, from a cost-wise, you just need to decommission. The other one then, of course, is hot water. Now, um, in New South Wales, uh, and I know there are a few people I can see that are from uh, New South Wales, for $33, $33, if you have a, a water heater that's gas and it's a, a, at least eight years old, you can have it replaced with a uh, and installed for um, at $33 and it's a uh, electric heat pump water heater. This is going to give you much more efficient um, um, production of, of your um, hot water and it's going to reduce emissions from gas. It will reduce emissions more so, of course, if you have solar, um, but 
overall, it is more efficient, um, prolific value type Y than, than burning gas for the same litre of water. So we've covered, um, we've covered cooktops, space heating, hot water. Um, what am I missing? What do we? What 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 else is in the house that we want to get off with gas? Nat. Um, well, we've got a uh, yet yeah, hot water, cooktop stoves, um, heating and cooling, and um, I okay. I I do. I have a question. Yeah. Nick. I just want to because. I um I've just moved into my uh, a new house here in Wollongong and um and it has everything. It has an induction cooktop right next to it. It's got a wok burner. Um, I've got um gas hot water. Um, and I'm going to be I'm going to be swapping that to a heat pump, and um um and I've got solar panels. I've got this whole mix of things. Mm. I want to know, and I'm sure there's a lot of uh, people on on the call. I want to know how hard is it to disconnect from gas? How do we? Uh. (laughs) Is that like how do you do it? Yeah, so um, you'll need a plan and step out, as I mentioned, to decommission or replace your gas appliances with electric ones. Um, It's not particularly hard every state and territory in Australia and I noticed there was someone from the UK so apologies I can't give you what you need here in this particular session but um, uh, let's just say the UK is not behind Australia in this in this work Um, every state and territory has some um, government website which will give you um, and I've seen someone's asked in the chat for a link to the $33 rebate from the New South Wales government It's on Service New South Wales, in that case is the one. Um, Solar Victoria also has theirs. So have a a quick look um, and Google that. There are um, grants, there are rebates. Sometimes you get them directly. Sometimes you get them through the tradespeople that sell them. But if you actually want to completely decommission your house from gas, yes, you'll need a plumber to come and cap your gas connection on your property and and this is something at the smart energy council working really hard to to do is we it costs the consumer anywhere between 700 to 1200 dollars just to get off gas which is absolutely crazy right when we're trying to go towards you know a, a safe climate we're trying to move off gas and go into renewables that this impediment exists so um watch this space um there's organizations like like AGL in on the east coast of Australia has 3.1 million residential gas customers. Uh, I often see them in Canberra, turning up and and you know asking how you're going to help customers get off gas. So that is that is an impediment. Um, but watch this space. Hopefully, we'll solve that soon. Can so, ask, how do you, sorry. Oh, okay. Do we like? Do we have to do that? Do we have to disconnect no. the gas or? We can put in our heat pumps and induction cooktops and just leave. You can. You can. You don't have to pay to do that. But I, I, I really feel really bad because if there's any plumbers out there, they're not going to be very happy that I say this. But no, it's not unsafe to do it. Usually, uh, like almost 99.9% of the time, you can absolutely stay connected to the gas and just stop um, having a contractual relationship with your energy supplier for gas and switch over um, if you do it properly then yes you'll probably pay you pay to um to cap the gas and and get off um nicolette can i jump in there and just um say something about that um is there a a, there's two options when you're getting off gas to disconnect there's absolutely disconnecting which is the one that costs up to you know twelve hundred dollars but you can also cap off your gas um for which is much less expensive up to about a hundred dollars um is that something that's you can do long term is it safe to do that that's that other option that's a really good question for which i have to confess i have not been introduced to that option because one's called i I was just reading about it today actually one was called um temporary disconnection and the other one was called disconnection um permanent and absolute absolute or abolishment and Mm -hmm. the abolishment was one you're talking about so i just wondered if there's other 
option was was there and if, if it was a cheaper alternative if that's something people can safely get done um thank you but um the, the, what, what, <laughs> nat knows this when i don't know something i say i don't know about that one oh, okay. so i have to get back to you on it no but thank you for finding it that's wonderful i mean that's a much cheaper way of doing it that's absolutely fantastic it's all about helping consumers be part of the solution we also had a question from sammy in the chat which said I'm currently renting in Queensland. We've just been advised from the plumbers that they will be recommending a new system. How can I, as a renter, encourage the owners to consider electric options? It's a fantastic question, and it's a. I'm not going to pretend either. It's really hard. So, um, in most, uh, how do you do it? You probably need to write a letter. Um, you, if you're already renting in this in this place, is um is it a house or apartments? If it's apartments, you want to get numbers of people, go door knock, meet your part, bring, take your beers, whatever it might be. It's a house, okay, you're fine. In which case, you just need to have a direct conversation with them. Um, and you'll find actually the electric um, options are no more expensive um, for a standard to above standard induction than it is to putting in a gas um, cooktop. Um, it's still a very fashionable thing to have a gas cooking people, um, particularly in apartments for some reason. Um, but um, uh, since in, it's a bit like the shower heads, once they got really good at giving you a good hair wash and the induction cooking got very responsive, it's a much better way to, to cook. So I just write them a, a letter or give them a phone call and let them know that's what you want. And that's great for them if they can retain you. In an apartment, if I might just quickly add, it's a little harder, but in most states and territories in Australia, if you have at least 50% of the um, owners of Estrada wanting to do something like getting off gas and going electric or installing solar in situ in, a, in an apartment block, 50% of those that are voting in the strata, then the rest of the strata owners have to follow suit and go with it. So you know become campaigners start having conversations there's nothing better than putting out cheese and bickies and and a, and a beer or a glass of wine and meet your neighbors and have these conversations with them and see whether they support the idea of taking it to the body corporate to the strata <laughs> okay i've got a sorry i can I just say something, Sammy? I'm a property manager in Queensland. I've managed some properties in Kalanga. <clears throat> I would recommend that you um, check out what um, the government is doing in Queensland and capture some of those in the email that you write because all landlords want to know how someone else is going to help them. Oh, that's a fantastic tip on C. Look, we're all campaigners already. Thank you. Um, also, just to let you know that um, yeah, uh, Solar Victoria, I think I can probably pop this in the link, Have um, will be very soon asking for applications for people who are, I mean, this is, you have to be a landlord in the first place, but for helping apartments move to solar as well. And we're working really hard at the Smart Energy Council to get a similar initiative in through New South Wales. And uh, to Sammy's point, Queensland's actually dropped in the last few months some really quite impressive um, help, particularly for solar. Um, I know we're talking about getting off gas, but particularly for solar for households. So, yeah, check out those sites that your government has. Um, can I just say I also manage properties in Victoria and the Victorian government now has, sorry, um, <laughs> now has just um, announced, I can send some details to... Um, sorry, it's my first time here to Nat. Um, but the if the renter qualifies under a cap, then the rental provider, because we're not tenants and landlords here, the rental provider can get a really decent rebate to put solar panels on on a rental property. So, yeah, and the, I've only just had my first one come through this week from a rental provider who wanted to know if the renter came under the, and it's a really huge, like 300000 per annum. The renter definitely is eligible. So that rental provider is now going to put solar on that property. Wow. That's fantastic, Emery. And isn't it great to have these conversations, Nat? Because there's gems of people who actually 
I can tell you what I know, which is tiny compared to what everybody in this in this chat is having experienced. So thanks. Yeah, and I think that is that is the really important thing about being part of this program because um, we really want to share what we're learning. Um, you know, we're all going on this journey together and um, we want to share everybody's experience with each other so that we can, we can learn as we go. Um, there was Kate uh, was saying providing, I think this is for the same for renters, providing them with a breakdown of what is of what is the most cost effective long term as well as environmental benefits seems to be a good strategy but yes it would be great to be pointed in the right direction for a resource we will make sure we'll send out an email next week and we will um, get any link <coughs> from Nick and from anybody else and we will share all the links and we've got some ourselves um, so look out for that email next week um, Breed some more questions um, yes, so we had another question. Um, this is on social media at some point, and it was, where do we find uh, trustworthy uh, builders and sort of service providers for electrification? So how do we know? <coughs> it's just the same for a lot of building, but yeah, is there a sort of resource out there for finding trusted? Uh, there. Yeah. Yeah, um, and please, anybody else, please chime in if you've got an answer for this. There are a number the government, this is just terrible. I got the acronym, which is not going to help us. I'll, I've got one hand on the keyboard, one hand holding the laptop. So when we do the next question, I'll Google it and pop it in the chat. The government's got a really, really new um, uh, portal that lets you locate. You say, oh, I really need to have a new heat pump installed, and it will tell you, oh, here are the certified heat pump installers. Um our Smart Energy Council, we have an accreditation program for products and for installers, for example, uh, and the Clean Energy Council, um, it, it's closed now, but they also have a, a, a register of approved quality installers. So that's the Clean Energy Council and the Smart Energy Council and the acronym, I want to pop in the chat in a second. Um, and then Sonia said, how should we go about replacing gas cooktop? in stone benches um, if it's a different size given the health health risk to cut um, engineered stone? That's a really good question. And can I just say, I once had to clean an oven, which turned into a brand new, whole brand new kitchen because <laughs> the oven couldn't be cleaned. So I had to get a new oven and the new oven didn't fit in the hole and then the hole had to be redone with the different cabinetry. And then that needed to be changed the fridge and then the whole kitchen, $25,000 later, not quite, but you know, like 18, it was a lot of money had to be done um thank you for that question i don't have an answer but i love that you're very very cautious and careful with what we now know is to be extremely large health risk um with things like uh yeah manufactured fibers and like it's not just marble and things like that but it's the composite stuff that goes in your life so um has anyone on if you do have it please put it in the chat actually um allison you've got a a, a induction cook top story haven't you <laughs> well mine's mine's quite similar to that so I I renovated my kitchen a couple of years ago and should have done the induction cooktop because I knew this was coming but I didn't I went back to gas and now I want to change it over and I have that exact problem that I have a I can't remember what size it is. Say it's a 70 gas cooktop and the induction ones, I can't find ones that will fit in the exact hole. But I'm I'm sure I'll be able to eventually, but it's not, it's just little things like that that, you know, when you're trying to do this whole transition, there's some little things that come up that you need to overcome. But um, just matching matching something that fits in the hole is <laughs> it's, it's it's what I'm looking for. Yeah, um, uh, and so it's just all these little tiny uh, challenges or roadblocks that we want to find solutions for. Um, just to, the I renovated and got rid of my gas cooktop, and I don't know if I had anything special compared to anybody else, but I was able to. Um, I have a, a lip of probably about uh, five mil, so it's not flush but I have my induction cooktop sitting just above the bench top. Um, and it did, it, it was actually quite elegant. The hole wasn't exactly right, but it had just enough lip to chuck it on top and, and not be flush, but it, it was fine. It cost me nothing additional to do it. 
And Felicity says, and uh, there's an induction one burner from Ikea for $69, which I guess would be fantastic for, you know, renters to be able to use um, an induction cooktop. Yeah. Um, yeah. And using electric fry pans. That was another point by Heather, um, which you could talk to maybe, Nicolette, is um, good to not fully go off gas in case the grid goes down in an emergency, I mean. And I feel like a lot of people do talk about that. Um, yeah, what do you sort of have to that's say? What, yeah, and that's where my little sort of um, life hack about the barbecue comes in. Um, it's you always want to have some matches around and some candles, of course, these types of things until in the next few years we move into energy storage behind the meter, meaning on our homes or in our communities. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I have an all-electric home now. I don't yet have batteries. I've been without power for a massive 20 minutes during dinner time. <laughs> That's the first world problem, but it was real. Um, and at that moment I went, oh, I wish I'd kept the, the barbecue. Um gas bottles so that's my only if you can do that if you've got a balcony and a little burner out there you don't even need to use it but it's lovely to have that storage just in case while we transition and we get that storage behind the meter can you share with us your um all electric home i'd so love to <laughs> oh not now because i'm in the, i'm in the all electric car oh no i just mean <laughs> can you just kind of visualize you walk oh. in the front door and you're yeah. in the front room and yeah, okay, sure. Um, so uh, I walk in the front door. I have um, LED lighting because uh, they're efficient. Uh, I'm going to turn left into the master bedroom and, uh, oh, actually, I've got a Himalayan rock salt lamp as well by the bedside table. Don't worry about that. We're going in the bathroom and um, I'm turning on the tap and the, I've got that, uh, the hot water that's coming out is all electric um, heat pump. It's, it's basically it looks like a water heater, except it's it's got, a, 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 you know, um, the way it works. Don't worry about the way it works. It's really very good. It's magic, actually. Heat pumps are magic, literally. Um, then uh, I, I'm going to throw in, I've got an electric, I've got an efficient shower head, nine litres per uh, a minute. And it gives a fantastic, fantastic shower. Um, you know, I'm going to go through the kitchen. I've got an induction cooktop. As I mentioned, it's a little bit above the, 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 um, the lip. I've got a, a microwave oven. I've always never been a big fan of microwave, microwave, microwave ovens until my all electric home. It works. I've got a, I've got a classic kind of not a thermomix. It's a it's a Kenwood or actually Kenny. He's great for chili sin carnes. Um, and uh, I love it because I reckon when my kids finally leave home, I've got an eighteen and a twenty one year old. I'm going to give them one of these things. They don't need all the cooktops. They can make meals out of one of these type of you know bench top all electric heating cooking cutting type things um what else have i got space heating so it when we bought this house it had a massive heater so i've got you know things that come out the ceiling and everything we used it for one year and I, oh my gosh it was the most inefficient expensive thing if you wanted to get warm you had to stand up and your head would be a bit warm even though we had fans to push down the hot air so we put in two um heaters uh just like they look like air conditioners the reverse cycle and they heat and cool and we run and i have them a little bit low so they i don't have them at the top of the ceiling i have them in about middle and i've got one of those in the lounge room and one of those in the dining room i've got my as i mentioned already my i in in winter time electric blankets that's pretty much it oh, Al, is that Alcy? i'm sorry <laughs> I've got solar as well, by the way, which is a real luxury because I have a house and I have a garage and I'm borrowing this electric car. So I I run it. Oh, I have a dishwasher as well. Oh, nice, um, which is electric. Um, oh, we haven't been in the laundry. I think that's mostly electric for people, isn't it? I've always washed with cold water, even though I have solar. Um, and, of course, I've, I've added three strands to my um, pull-out uh, you know what do you call that wind powered um laundry dryer what help me out clothesline that's the word i'm looking for love a clothesline again i'm not in apartments I have the luxury of drying my clothes on a clothesline yeah that's about it yeah that's fantastic nick and there's lots of people in the chat saying 
you know, what they've been doing, replaced our instant hot water, gas hot water with a sand and heat pump. Actually, I want to do a big shout out because we've got our um, one of our uh, partners on the call tonight and um, they're called Reclaim. So they do incredible heat pumps. And so a big shout out to, to Reclaim. And if you're looking for heat pumps, please Google Reclaim. And um, I'm going to be swapping my hot water over with Reclaim heat pumps. So, um, and we're going to do a whole session on heat pumps um, pretty soon. So I, um, Nick, I, I know we're going to have to wrap up soon because we're getting close to 10 to eight, but I did want to ask you before you jump off and, um, and go have your, your dinner with your girls, what, can you say to us, why do we, what's your pitch? Why do we have to get our houses off gas? Oh, <laughs> it's um, what we're housing. It, no one else can come into your house. The government can't come into your house. You are the ones making the decisions and you can make the decision which helps be part of the solution or you can make a decision that, is the status quo. So we really need you to turn up and just get creative one step at a time. We have to move off gas and onto clean, efficient, renewable energy, really because, I don't know, I've got kids. I hope I've got grandkids soon. The only way we're going to get a safe climate is if all of our homes transition and we are absolutely in the driver's seat to make it happen. And with communities like this where we support each other, this is how it works. This is how it gets done. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much. We um, we we better keep we better move on to wrapping up. I'm gonna throw it over to Bree and um, Nick. Thank you. We will collect all this information from Nick that she's been talking about tonight. We've been recording this, so we won't miss anything. And all any questions and all what you've shared in the chat, we'll share with everybody. Um, and um, anything else, Bree? But I mean, over to you. But were there any anything else for Nick? Yes. Um. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, my role tonight is just to give you a little update on what um we've been doing as a team here at Million Women, um, uh, because as we're you know empowering. And going on this journey with all of you to transform our homes beyond uh, fossil fuels, we're also getting, we also want you to engage with your politicians on all the things you've been doing, um, going to them with the ways that you have or the ways you haven't been able to electrify so that, you know, the um, our politicians can really hear and know uh, what what's what their constituents want and what they um, need to go to Canberra or go to Parliament to push for. Um, and as part of that, we as a team are trying to shape policy. Uh, so we've been putting in a bunch of submissions. Um, there was a, a Senate inquiry into residential electrification, which is um, being set up to, yeah, eventually get in uh, legislation all about residential electrification. So we put in a submission and are meeting with the um, committee. So as a yeah, as an organization, we are really trying to push for incentives and rebates for everyone to be able to uh, access electrification because obviously if we want the most fair and equitable uh, sort of transition we want everyone to be able to afford it um, and the people that need those rebates are going to be the people that need to be you know scooped up and brought along so yeah as part of uh, just educating everyone else we're really working with uh, yeah putting in submissions and really having all of our stories and bringing us uh, bringing, bringing everything that we're doing with women power along and uh, taking it to the politicians. And that also feeds into us having conversations with uh, politicians on every side of politics, um, federal and state, uh, for, for those of you who are in Australia. And that's the other thing I wanted to mention is that um, we do have, uh, the wonderful Alison did a whole bunch of uh, com compiling all the rebates and incentives that exist at the moment in Australia. Um, but also if you're not from Australia and you're on the call, um, like reach out, let us know where you are, and if you want a similar sort of thing uh, in your country, we can. Yeah, we want to we want to expand the list, um, but we've started with Australia as that's where the rest that's where all the team exists. 
Um, but yeah, we yeah, just want to share all of the stories that we're picking up from Wimta. So um, it's exciting to be kind of yeah owning the story and uh, meeting with everyone. And we really thank everyone else. We want to thank everyone for um, if you did the survey to contribute to our first uh, submission. I think we did that like a month ago or so, but we're going to be continuing to um, put out different opportunities for you to get involved and for you to tell your stories or even um, join us on meetings and things like that in the part, in the future when we continue to engage politicians. But yeah. Can, can I just jump in there? One thing about rebates. Yeah. Um, I have had a couple of people come to my home to quote on the um, heat pumps and because I've got instantaneous gas heating currently, um, not a tank, not an electric tank and not a gas tank, I don't qualify for the $33 or $99 heat pump. So just be wary of that. If you if you don't have a current electric um, tank system, you, you're going to be up for quite a bit more than that. So um, just wanted to flag that. The, I, I do get, I do qualify for some rebate, but not not to the extent that I would if I had a different type of system currently. So there's lots of rebates out there and we'll, we'll give you the sheet so you can look and see what what which ones you um, can apply for in your state. But just to be aware that um, you might not necessarily qualify for that $33 one that Nicolette mentioned. Um, uh, thank you, Alison. And um, have we got time to do our survey? Yeah, I'm going to... <laughs> attempt to screen share again <laughs> can we all see the survey um uh, i don't yes there we are can we see the survey well i did put the link in the chat as well um as part of this process we really do need your feedback and your stories and your input so we can continue to shake these sessions and also to yeah to continue to share the stories because at the end of all of this we really will um, all the things that we've learned and all the things, the barriers and the solutions that come up and, you know, the Zooms is just one part of um, what we hope to do with Wimta, but uh, we do really need your input and to be able to capture it all. So if we could do the survey on the call all together, it um, should only take you a couple of minutes, hopefully, but we would really appreciate it. Yes. And um, um, if you just, yep, yeah, scan the barcode and uh and and do the survey that would be really wonderful oh, I get that. and then and then um so we'll just take a minute and then i will finish off The link. And just what um yeah, while you're oh okay, I'll wait another minute. Maybe put done in the chat. Or you can put your little hand up. I can't see. Wait. <laughs> Okay. Let me just see if I can... All right. Um, this is the slide from. 
Oh, that's the slide. Okay. And then how do I get back on the screen, Bree? I can only see you. Right. Um... Ah, there we are. Okay. Um, let's all go back on gallery mode. And um, thank you so much, everybody. It was so um, beautiful to have you all here. We had, I think at one point, we had over 80 people on the call, which was just fantastic. Um, I want to thank all our partners. I know we have a partner's slide, but if I'm um, not sure whether we can get it up. But um, but I would like to do a second shout out to because I can see them on the call right now is Reclaim. So that's who you want to go to for your heat pumps. Um, um, and um, yes, we've got a regular newsletter coming out. That's coming out soon. So look out for that. We'll try and send that out every couple of weeks. And we've got a Facebook page. It's our Women Power Facebook page. It's just for our cohort. We'd love you all to participate in that Facebook page. Um, Bree's going to put uh, the link up and, um, and we will also send it out in the newsletter this week. Um, and the all the stuff that we're doing with politicians at the moment is, is so that we can get incentives to accelerate our household transformation. We know it's not easy. We know it's not cheap. And uh, so um, we would really love your participation in the submissions that we're doing because your feedback and your stories really help us with our conversations with politicians, state and federal. So when we send out those requests and for giving us any stories, uh, we'd love anything to come our way so that we can add it into our body of, of, of work that we're engaging our politicians with. Thank you, everybody. Um, this will be the last Zoom session we do for this year. I'm off to COP, COP28 in a couple of weeks. I, I'm excited about that. I'll be able to really share what I'm seeing over there with you all. So stay in touch with our Instagram and our Facebook and um, and hopefully I'll be able to share my experience uh, at COP um, in Dubai in a couple of weeks time. That's, that's my dog just whining. So thank you, everybody. Um, stay safe. Thank you for being part of this really special group. And, um, and hopefully over the next few years, we'll be able to really have, hopefully over this year, we'll be able to have this plan to electrify our lives over the coming few years. So, yep. And let's say goodbye to gas. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Sonia. Yep. Safe travels. Bye, everybody. <laughs> it's so nice to see you all and stay safe. Lots of love. Bye. Bye, everyone.